God, once again, I'm just amazed just at the way you work. Um, God, the, the reminders along the way that you are at work all the time and you are at work in so many ways and in, and, and in such a way, God, that I can't even begin to conceive of everything that you're doing and yet, God, you've included us in this, this journey and in this work. And God, I, I admit, from one conversation to the next, I'm just amazed. So thank you for just going before us and thank you, God, for just leading and speaking. And God, thank you that, that, that you're accomplishing great things. And some of them we get to see and some of them we don't. And yet, God, you're still accomplishing great things. And God, as we pray for healing, as we pray for recovery, as we, as we pray for, for um, just the, the families and relationships and all the things that we struggle in and with, in this life, God, we, we get together on Wednesdays and we read off every request that's been shared with us. And God, we look at them and some of them we recognize and some of them we don't recognize. And some of them we know exactly what's going on and some of them we don't know anything about what's going on. And yet, God, we, we have a confidence before your throne that you know every single person, every single situation, and you know exactly how you're at work in the middle of it and how you're going to bring about glory and blessing and honor and sometimes god we don't really agree with the outcome and yet god we want to agree in spirit with you and pray god that you would have your will father that you would do what only you can do god that you would accomplish your glory and so, God, tonight, as we've mentioned the prayer concerns, you know them, you know the people, you know the circumstances, the families, the situations. And, and so, Father, we just lay it before you. And, God, we commit it to you and ask, God, that you would work. And, God, help us to see, uh, God, just the answers and praise you and worship you and celebrate you for answers that, that he, whether we understand them or not, God, we're just going to glorify you. Thank you tonight that we get to spend a few moments in your word. Knowing, God, that you want to speak to us. You want to speak to our hearts. You want to nudge us. And for some of us, God, you want to club us over the head. God, help us to pay attention to you. Not just tonight, not just in James chapter 4, not just, not, not just in a song or, or, or any of those, but God, all the time you want us to pay attention. So God, tonight, help us to, to listen and to, to understand the, the message that you have for each of us. Not, not this, this uh, proclamation of message, but God, that still small voice as you speak through your word, as you speak through the message tonight, as you speak into us, not just at us, but God, as you speak into us. God, let us live it out. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Scott, come here a minute. Did y'all get that? You didn't? Sally, what did I just tell him? You don't have a clue, right? Think I... <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. Nancy, where are you from? See, there you go. She's going to tell you what she's thinking. Now, anyway, <laughs> see, now Scott will tell you what I told him. Because what I was saying to him was just for him. I didn't want you to hear it. And yes, because it's a public setting, it is rude to do something like that. Scott, tell him what I told you. <laughs> exactly. I told him, I said, I'm not telling you anything. I just want them to think I'm telling you something. <laughs> you got that? He said, yeah, I got it. See? Now, why did I do that? Well, just because it's funny for one thing. <laughs> and I had a couple of really good jokes this week about listening. Y'all want to hear a good listening joke? I'll, I'll save it for y'all. I don't use these so much on Sundays, but I'll, I'll, I'll share this with you. Uh, which one should I tell you? I'll do the listening one. All right, so uh, I should pick on somebody old. <laughs> All right, we'll just we'll just say, 
We'll say old Jim, all right? Old Jim went to the doctor and had his checkup. And so a couple of days after his doctor's visit, the doctor happened to be driving down the road and saw Jim walking up the road, 82 years old, man. He, he's got this beautiful woman walking on his arm, and they're walking down the road together. When Jim comes back to the doctor's office a couple of days later, the doctor says, Jim, you're doing great, aren't you? He said, well, Doc, I'm just doing what you're telling me to do. He said, I got me a hot mom, and I'm being cheerful. I said, Jim, that's not what I said. I said, you got a heart murmur. Be careful. <laughs> now, I admit, I stole that from, from, from a, a video I was watching from Manor Church up in uh, somewhere up in Fayetteville. But I thought, I thought, exactly. Sometimes we hear, but not right. Okay, so tonight I want to share with you this, this idea of getting close. Get close to God. How do you do that? Can I, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, I've been sharing with y'all the last two Sundays about me and my dad. My dad, we're close. I mean, now I don't see him all the time. I don't go hang out with him or any of that. But my dad and I have a relationship that we are close. Now, I know not everybody does. So, so for some people, when I bring up a dad relationship, some people are like, yeah. You know, my dad was a brute. My dad was mean. My dad was vacant. My dad wasn't there, right? So, so for some people, that doesn't relate. But I want you to think about those relationships. It, there you go, Bobby. Beat her. <laughs> anyway, so, so the point being is that in relationship, what kind of relationship is it that our heavenly dad, Abba Father, what is it that he wants for us to have? Uh, it, 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 we have portrayed from Old Testament to New this concept of, of God the judge, right? God the throne. See, I've told you, God's throne in my mind's a swivel rocker, right? I'm going to pile in on him. Well, we'll see, we, we, we get these visual images of our Heavenly Father, or we get these visual images of God the Father, Right? Uh, and, and that affects our approach, right? That affects the relationship that God initiates and wants for us to have with Him, but because of some either personal experience or even some sort of doctrinal understanding, we limit our approach to God. And yet, when we read like in Psalms, I put this in one of the gathering in the words this week. If you don't know how to, how to really pray and, and, and express to God, just open Psalms and pray Psalms. Just read like David, because David's Psalms are just really prayers and praise to God. And sometimes he's in the pits. And sometimes he's on the mountaintop. And so just, just you know, initiate. And then as you do... From Psalms, for instance, this, this prayer uh, encounter with God, what you'll see is, is you'll start to notice that you're not praying Psalms. You started coming up with your own. You see? So, so we let this imagery or we let this sort of um, uh, our personal experience affect the encounter and the approach we have with God. And yet God is saying, come close. This is what it says, James chapter 4. I'm going to start in verse 7. You'll recognize it because this is one of those passages that, that good memory people say you need to memorize. Therefore, submit to God, re resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Right? It's one of those verses they tell you to memorize. Right? Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Here you go. This is where when I used to read this passage, I'd get a little confused. Be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your, gloom, your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. Now, I'm going to walk this through in about three statements, all right? Three things that I think uh, are, are purposeful in this. First, 
God absolutely commands. This is the voice of James. This is inspired by Holy Spirit. James is the brother of Jesus. He didn't believe Jesus was the Messiah until after the resurrection. And so you got James, the brother of Jesus, who served sort of as pastor of First Baptist Church, Jerusalem. i just check and see how many of you listen. <laughs> But this is James. James has an intimate knowledge of Jesus. And then after the resurrection has an intimate knowledge of Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. And so he writes for us by inspiration of the Spirit. And in this passage right here, it's very imperative. These are instructive words to us. And he says, avoid the adversary. Resist the the devil, run away, right, run away, I grew up, I, I went, I saw the movie, um, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, you know, run away, run away, right, well, I, I used to tell this joke, but somebody got offended at me when I told this joke one time, you know, they always tell preachers, so you stepped on my toes this morning, preacher, and I say, I wasn't aiming for your toes. I was aiming for the devil's. Why were you standing so close? Right? Now think about it. Why is it that we want to live a life of compromise that is so close to this line in the sand that is the, 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 the sort of the arena for Satan's work in the world? And, and that, that sort of temptation for you and I. Here you go. I, I shared this with somebody today. It was some kind of little meeting I was having. I forgot them all now. But anyway, the illustration that, that Jesus gives us is, is that when you cast out a demon, right? If you don't put something in its place, seven come back. So I was telling this person, I said, you know what, if, if there's something that God's leading you, like, and, and I'll go ahead, I'll, you know, some specific things, you know, there, there's a, a habitual thing that I love the party, not me, but, but this kind of culture in our, man, I just go out every night and hang out with the party crowd, I end up drinking a couple of beers, and I drink, uh, end up drinking a couple of pitchers of beer, and, and by the end of the night, I don't even know what's going on anymore. But I know God's telling me I can't do that anymore. So I'm cutting out drinking because I have a weakness in that area and call it addiction, call it alcoholism, call it whatever you want to. I'm going to cut that out. You know what I said? What are you putting in its place? See, if we're going to resist the devil and, and submitting to God, God says, resist the devil. James is telling us he will flee from you. But here's the thing. We've got to put ourselves in that context of, of repentance and changing the direction of our pursuit, right? He goes on to say, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. It's not like, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not like, okay, I'm going to draw near to God and God's going to go, wait a minute. And God is perfect heavenly father. And when we purposefully intentionally draw near to him he responds by drawing near to us see that's a positional thing he responds by drawing near to us now how do you draw near to god i know people say well, i had a guy back up in pisgah Forest say to me he said if you're gonna tell me i just need to pray more and read my bible more and go to church more i said Okay, if you don't want me to tell you those things, what do you want me to tell you? <laughs> but here's what I told him. I said, all right then. Don't read your Bible more. I just told him, I said, put your Bible down. I said, don't take it with you to work. Don't carry it. Don't read it. Don't even touch your Bible until you know God's telling you to pick it up. And then I left him alone. Right? So I went out to his job site one day because we were going to go to eat lunch together. And I hopped up in his truck with him. And guess what? His truck was on, I mean, his Bible was on the dash of his truck. And I just leaned over. I said, 
what is that doing there? Like that, you know, and he kind of went, well, you know, after a few days, God was kind of on me about getting back in the Bible. I was like, exactly! Right? I mean, if we're going to draw near to God, then we've got to do the things that provide for that nearness to God. Okay? Now, I'll be honest with you, the body of Christ has not always been helpful in that. Call it churchianity. If that offends you, just know I'm going to say it probably ten more times. Religiosity. We took a group of kids up to a camp called Snowbird up in western Andrews, North Carolina. And our, our young people at Pisgah Forest had never been to a camp like this. And so all the counselors just swarmed our bus. And our kids were like, <gasps> like that. <laughs> well, our bus driver knew what was going on. And so one of the counselors went, what's wrong with them? And our bus driver said, oh, they're religious. Right? Because here's one of the things, folks. Here's what I'm talking about is, is the body of Christ has not always done the best job making the personal and intimate contact with God easy or facilitating it, right? See, I think as we march through this year, what we as the gathering are being called to do is to create the environment, the atmosphere, and the opportunity for every single person that shows up at this place and beyond to get personally intimate with God. We've got to draw near. And guess what? God will respond as we draw near. He goes on to say how we do this. Okay, now this is the explanation of the part of this passage that, you know, at one point I didn't, I was like, what? Be miserable? No, no, I'm not. Mar- no, what it means is, is, is considering what we're leaving behind, right? We weep over the fact that we were once bound in sin and distanced from God. We weep over that, right? We, we recognize that, that, you know what? I, I was deceived apart from God. And I mourn over the fact that, you know what? God has been waiting and holding this for me all my life. Ever since I acknowledged and, and received salvation, and yet I still wanted to keep my foot over there. And James is saying, mourn over what used to be. You see? Turn from that. Be, and then he goes on to simply say, humble yourself. See, I, I, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this. <laughs> As in all things, the root of sin is pride. Augustine said it probably. One of the early church fathers was one of the ones who identified it in writing. That, that, that the idea, the self, the me, the pride, you know, brings about that downfall. Okay? And what God is saying through the pen of James and through, you know, this brother of Jesus is, is humility. Be Honest in self-evaluation. You see? Humble yourself before the Lord. Let Him pick you up. You see? Jesus gives that as an illustration. Don't walk into the wedding feast and take the seat of honor. Because then the, the groom might have to come to you and say, Wait a minute, that's not your seat. You go to the end of the line. Instead, go sit at the end of the line and let the groom say, no, 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 don't sit here. Come up here to the head of the table. You see, that's the Jesus illustration of that. So here you go. This is the thing that that I want to see us start to. Here's what I've noticed in my own journey and my own walk with God. The more I pour into me the things that Draw me closer. The closer I get. Whether it's the music. The people. 
the shows. I'm on my stationary Marcy Air One bicycle this morning. Y'all, the Gathering Surf City Baptist now has a YouTube channel. For those that can't get it to show up on the website or the app, just pull up YouTube now and search the Gathering Surf City Baptist and subscribe. Now, I'll just tell you, this past Sunday, I think it was this past Sunday, the 810 Worship Gathering, the whole service is on there. If you came at 920, you can go back and watch 810. Now, I, I horrified Leanne Moore just a minute ago. <laughs> Because the children's time from Sunday a week ago, it's on YouTube now. And I pulled it up and started playing it. And Leanne went, no! <laughs> See? The truth is, what, what are you pouring in? Or what are you allowing to be poured in? Because whatever you're allowing to be poured into you is not a passive exercise. You're allowing it there. You're permitting the world to have an impact on who you are. You're allowing, and I'll go ahead and say it, the adversary, the devil, you're allowing him to have an influence in who you are and what you do when you allow the world to pour into you. I used to have young people when I was a youth pastor, and I didn't know how real this was, and I didn't know how true this was even back then. But they would come in and talk about what a struggle it was to live for Jesus. What a struggle. You know, I'm in the 10th grade, and there's just so many temptations out there. And they ask old people this question, you know, because they think as we get older, it gets easier, right? No. So they sit there and I say, you know what? You need to saturate yourself with the things of God. The things you watch, the things you read, the things you listen to. The people you hang out with, the places you go. If you want to cut something of the devil or the world out of your life, then you have got to put something in its place. See? So so that is this this draw near to God. In order to do that, cleanse your hands. Purify your hearts. Don't be double-minded in this thing. Don't be trying to keep one foot over here and one foot over here. Right? Don't, don't rejoice in sin. Mourn over sin. See? And, and so, folks, what does it mean to be alive in Christ? See? You know? And, and, and guess what? It's not an exclusive thing. It's not just for preachers. It's not just for, for um, whoever. This aliveness, this, this come alive in Christ is for everyone. And, and I think that's, you know, and I, I mean, I'm, I, don't, I really hope this is not beating y'all up. I just want you to know, they're, they're, you know what? Um, when I was a youth pastor, you ready for this? I had season passes to Carowinds, Six Flags, and Lanier Island Water Park. Now, I was still kind of young. This is actually before Angie and I got married. And so um, I wouldn't even be taking the youth. The church paid for it because I budgeted it that way. So <laughs> I wouldn't even be taking the youth group. I'd just go to Six Flags by myself. And ride rides and play and have fun. Ooh, yay. Or I'd go out to Lanier Islands and ride water slides and stuff like Just, uh, yay, right? And, and those are the kind of things that in that, that era of my life, that season of my life, I looked forward to the excitement of that and the, the fun of that. Well, can I just go ahead and tell you, we can look forward to the, the fun, the intimacy, the joy of being that close to God. See? Well, I'll go ahead and say this. For most of the body of Christ, Christendom, or however you want to look at it, that scares some people. If I get that close to God, 
It might change me. Can I just go say, go ahead and say, if you get that close to God, <laughs> it will change you. Those things that you say, well, I might have to give up something. It's not about having to give it up. You want to give it up at that point because you got close to God. Okay? This was sort of what flesh... All right, so sometime this week in gathering in the Word, this draw near to God and He will draw near to you came out in the gathering in the Word. And this was my, my sort of thought process in studying the passage. I only gave you just, I think, just that little clip of the passage in the gathering in the Word. But, but the point of it is, is that this is, this is not just a draw near to God, He'll draw near to you. Okay, here I am. There is a practice of attitude and behavior and choice that God's calling us to. Now, guess what I know? <laughs> You're the Wednesday night crowd. You already want that. Or guess what? You wouldn't be here on Wednesday night. But here's the thing. When you get excited about getting close to God, the people around you will start to say, wow, I want that. Why do you have that? I want that. You see? All right. <sighs> Pray with me. Father, I want to thank and praise you again that you have an endless supply, a bottomless spring of the outpouring and overflow of your spirit and your love for us. And God, help us to dive in to be near to you. God, help us not to, to make this academic. Oh, well, I'm going to draw near. God, help us to jump into the deep end. And God, let it overwhelm us with this joy and this, this peace and this contentment. And then God, let it become infectious to others that they want to jump in with us. So God, we, we bow before you tonight. And God, our, my simple prayer as a pastor at the gathering is God, as we draw near to you, that it has an impact on our community and our culture. And that people will see you in your glory. As you speak to us, as we obey and follow. God, I thank you again for what you're doing today. And what you're doing in each one of us. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.